<sighs> Alright, so let's get some context here. Uh, I go to the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I don't care if you know where I live. Come find me, come kill me, I don't care. But, um, recently, uh, we've been dealing with some issues. So, as a whole, um, a problem that's been going on is um, at the the uh, College of Arts and Sciences. It's called the Fulbright College of Arts and Sciences. And if you don't know, uh, Fulbright is a racist. Or was a racist, he's dead now. And what happens is he was a U.S. Senator, and, you know, let's go, go ahead and just run through this. Let me... J. William Fulbright. Alright. This dude. This old ass ugly motherfucker. This man. He a racist. Alright. Okay. So, basically, he did a lot. He was involved a lot. But, specifically, uh... Alright. In 1965, 1956, uh, campaign across the county, the country for Adlai uh, Stevenson, its second presidential campaign, and across Arkansas for his own re-election bid, emphasized his opposition to civil rights and his support for segregation. He also noted his support for oil companies and consistent votes for more farm aid to poultry farmers, a key Arkansas constituency. He easily defeated his re Republican challenger. Okay. And then... In 1950, uh, Fulbright sponsored an amendment which, if enacted, would allow soldiers to choose whether or not to serve in a racially integrated unit. 1952 assisted with blocking with an Alaska statehood bill entirely because of his view that legislators from the state would ask support the civil rights bills. According to biographer Randall Bennett Woods, Fulbright believed the South was not yet ready for integration. According to this guy, according to Randall Bennett Woods, but that education would eventually eradicate eradicate prejudice and allow blacks to take their rightful place in American society. In 1954, signed Strom Thurmond's the Manifesto in opposition to Brown v. B. Board of Education decision in a letter to the constituent at the time. He, com he compared the manifesto favorably to the alternative of secession. Privately, he assured aides that signing the manifesto was his only means of maintaining influence. With the Southern delegation, he, along with John Sparkman, Lister Hill, and Price Daniels, submitted a version that acknowledged theirs was a minority position and pledged to fight the Brown v. Brown ruling through legal means. In later years, he insisted his intervention had led to a more moderate version of the manifesto than Thurman originally proposed, and his claims were generally accepted by Arkansas black leadership. Fulbright was one of only two Southern members of Congress to condemn the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing. Birmingham, Alabama, in 1963, by white supremacists that killed four girls and injured between 14 and 22 other people. With other Southern Democrats participating in the filibuster of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and opposed the 1965 Voting Rights Act. However, 1970 voted for a five year extension of the Voting Rights Act. All right. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, Fulbright. He a racist. Just because you uh, manage to, basically, like, just because you manage to, like, like, likely it was some so level of virtue signal, basically trying to posture it as to make himself seem less racist. Because in the reality, as you can see, he's saying the Southern Manifesto, he opposed civil rights, even though in later times he insisted that's what he was trying to do and pro propose a more moderate reform or whatever. But the problem comes is this history is fundamentally linked with him he didn't just like merely like like abstain from voting in civil rights act even though abstaining is still like pretty comparably to like being the actor in itself but the problem comes is he actively fought against civil rights he fought against integration he fought against the civil rights act but against the voting rights act and even though he voted for a five-year extension of it he still fought against it right so that's kind of the history of Fulbright, right? He was he was a very politically involved person. 
He was a senator, he was involved in multiple campaigns and elections and all that stuff. And eventually he transitions over to become the president, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's the president of the United University of Albany. Uh, or University of Arkansas. Give me a second. Fulbright earned a history degree from the University of Arkansas in 1925. He became a member of the Sigma uh, Chi fraternity. He was elected president of the student body. And, yep. He was appointed president of the school in 1939, making the youngest president university president in that country. Held the post in 1941. Uh, in 1939, as president issued a public declaration. Declar uh, declaration declaring sympathy with allied cause and urging the United States to make a pro-allied neutrality. Uh, went to fit step further, declared it was America's vital interest in the war on their side and the fight the Nazis. He was suddenly fired from the University of Arkansas by the governor, Homer Martin Atkins. He learned the reason for his hacking was Atkins had been offended that a newspaper owned by Fulbright's mother had supported the governor's opponent in the 1940 Democratic primary, and that was the governor's revenge. Upset at the way the governor's caprice had ended his academic career, he became interested in politics. So basically, he was involved in academics. He was the president for a while, and because he got, got beat over the back, he basically uh, became interested in politics, and he became senator, U.S. House of Representatives, all that stuff, blah, 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 and... From there, he um, has also been involved, uh, he basically has an entire college named after him, the Fulbright College of Arts and Sciences, and then he also has, like, the Fulbright uh, Scholarship, I'm pretty sure. Fulbright Scholarship. Uh, Fulbright Program. Yeah, give me a second. Fulbright program, including the Fulbright Hayes program, is one of several U.S. cultural exchange programs with the goal to improve inter intercultural relations, cultural diplomacy, and intercultural competence between the American people of the United States and other countries through the exchange of persons, knowledge, and skills. What does it establish, though? The ability to use the proceeds or selling sur US surplus U.S. government. The crucial time in the aftermath of the Second World War and the, the pressing establishment of the United Nations Fulbright program was an attempt to promote peace. Promote peace. All right. Devise a plan to forego the debts of foreign countries and mass during the war in return for funding and an international education program. It was through the belief that this program was the essential vehicle to promote peace and mutual understanding between individuals, institutions, and future leaders, who, wherever they may be. So basically, he not only was involved in... Uh, the whole process of being a racist and opposing civil rights and stuff but he was also a u.s senator and then he was also like he also supported this full right program right he has a lot of history to him and he is connected to a lot of things so what happens is in the university of arkansas um he has the fulbright college named after him and then he also has a statue placed outside of old maine so just to give you guys an idea So, this is Old Main, okay? This is Old Main. Uh, it's, it's basically right smack dab in the middle of campus. And what happens is Old Main here is, like, kind of, like, one of the major points, like, the major crux, like, cultural uh, foundations of the University of Arkansas. And then the Fulbright statue. Yeah, it's this statue of him. Just kind of standing, like, behind, in the very back, but a very significant visible portrait. Like, um, so there's the, there's the, f actually, maybe this is the front, because, like, the problem comes is there's, um, two sides. There's the side with the statue, where a lot of people come from different classes to come to their classes there. And then there's the other side, where people are heading up the street, um, uh, from, like, uh, Dixon Street. Which is just basically, uh, like, the, like, the, the little restaurant strip. It's got a lot of bars that's pretty much open for Fridays and all that stuff. And so there's two points, and he stands as, like, a major crux point of, like, all student traveling. Hello, rascal. Hey, bud. I'm in a little bit of a segment right now. I love you. I know you want my food, but you're not going to get my food. Anyways. So basically, that's his, that's his history, kind of. And 
the problem comes a lot is this shit happens and you know it's rough and it's annoying and all that stuff and yeah like and what happens is recently we uh over the past last couple months i think over a year pretty much uh, a lot of students uh, primarily black students you know because they primarily involved in this and what happens is they've been uh pushing for uh to move the statue to rename the college and specifically to also rename that one of the dining halls bruff dining hall and what happens is uh bruff uh so dining hall so bruff dining hall so it's just a dining hall it's it's pretty popular it serves a buffet kind of thing and Arkansas. Charles Hillman Bruff was a born. He was a, another white dude who's governor, and I'm pretty sure public support was elected as governor in 1918, 1919. The Elaine race riot in Ohio. So, uh, in Arkansas, there's a big fucking massacre. We'll go over it in a minute, but basically. It took place in which white residents created false conspiracies about black residents wanting to kill, trying to form a union to ban better wages as sharecroppers. Bruff requested federal troops from the War Department and accompanied the troops to the scene. There, soldiers ran up black residents, and as the Mississippi vigilantes and local posse were already doing, killed black residents indiscriminately with a total of 237 lives lost. This is one of the deadliest racial conflicts in all of American history. Yeah, so... Basically... We've got two main things, uh, the Bruff Dining Hall and the Fulbright uh, College Salah Statue. So, this uh, committee of people that were like trying to like uh, advocate for changing is uh, they wanted to rename the dining hall, rename the college, and, re and get rid of the statue. See, sounds pretty reasonable, right? Sounds pretty reasonable, but like, you know, it's kind of bad optics. Doesn't look good for the university at the same time, like, you know, like, it's not a good idea to support like racists. And so that's kind of like the whole foundation is rough. Um, he was the governor that uh, that allowed the massacre. He basically made the massacre happen because he had hired out the troops and shit. And then um, Fulbright specifically opposed uh, civil rights and all that stuff, right? Hey, bud, get the fuck out of my... Uh, bud. Hey, rascal. Rascal, I love you. But please, back away. So that's the history of that, and they were advocating and bargaining and all that. They were trying to like push to get rid of this stuff. Uh, University of Arkansas committee decision footprint. Okay, and basically, is there's two components here. Um, there's the committee uh, that basically considers the recommendations from the committee. They're what are the committee is? They're important and they're having significant significant amount of influence. Jesus, did you have to go through that way? Did you have to like go all the way over there? Why not just go back the same way you came? Why? But yeah. So that's the whole problem with it and everything. And so uh, recommendation from the committee. So we're just gonna read over this. Committee to evaluate J. William Fulbright's presence at the University of Arkansas began in September of 2020 in response to student demands from the following yeah, the Black at UARC movement. The committee had a diverse membership reflective of the many voices. Yeah, so the committee had a diverse membership reflective of the many voices at U of A. Consistent 19 voting members represented the U University of Arkansas students, faculty, staff, and alumni. The committee was charged with examining the presence of Senator J. William Fulbright and Governor Charles Bruff. As currently represented on campus, the naming and statuary were asked to provide a recommendation on the three possible actions. Should J. William Fulbright's statue be removed from its location outside Old Main? Should J. William Fulbright's name be removed from the title of the J. William Fulbright College of Arts and Sciences at the University of Arkansas? And should Charles Bruff's name be removed from Bruff Commons? Through weekly meetings during the academic year, the committee heard presentations from various student groups on campus, including those involved with the Black at New York movement, experts including historians and lead scholars, university stakeholders, including alumni, area studies programs, and representatives. 
After many hours of deliberation, the committee to evaluate Jerry Williams' Fulbright's presence at the University of Arkansas makes the following recommendations to the University of Arkansas. J. William Fulbright's name should be removed from the College of uh, College of Arts and Sciences. One of the core principles that the University of Arkansas should never compromise is that it needs to be an equally welcoming place for all students from across the state and beyond, regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, sexuality, and gender. Other pr core principles include academic freedom and a commitment to serving the people of Arkansas through teaching, re research, and outreach. The committee considered that it is not charged to pass final judgment on the legacy of the senator. I don't like that bit a little bit, you know, like... You, you can just basically call him a racist. The only reason they're doing that is kind of just to avoid upsetting like some people who would probably consider him a positive person or whatever. The committee considers that it's not its charge to pass final judgment on the legacy of the senator. The policeman used the senator's name and statue to celebrate Fulbright's international achievements is not conducted conducive. Placement used the senator's name and statue to celebrate Fulbright's international achievements not conducive to fully and unambiguously representing the contradictory record of Senator Fulbright and thus acts as an endorsement of this full record, including opposition to matters of civil rights. So basically what they're saying is just focusing on the international record ignores the, the bad stuff he's done. And so basically you have to take the good with the bad and realize having the bad, like having him represented means you're kind of endorsing the bad stuff he did. So yeah. Students of all races, but especially black students, have told the committee that they will find the J. William Fulbright statue in the name of the Fulbright College of Arts and Sciences to be unwelcoming, and they have articulated rational reasons for their sense of alienation. They emphasize Senator uh, Fulbright's record and civil rights, including his decision to sign the Southern Manifesto, unwillingness to challenge Orville Falbus during the Little Rock Central High School crisis, opposition to civil rights bills 1957 and 1964, and voting against the Voting Rights Bill of 1965. For them, the Fulbright statue and the college name glorify a man who do not see black Arkansans as full citizens and signify that the university is not fully left behind its Jim Crow past. The committee voted 11 to 5 with three absent to remove the name of Fulbright from the college. Okay, sounds pretty good. Even though, you know, they're somewhat non-committal, they're saying, you know what, he's done enough bad stuff. We're, we're going to admit it. We're going to remove his name. Cool. Yeah, it's recommendations from the committee, so begin committee to evaluate so i got i can't remember who they recommended to uh statue should be removed from his location outside the given fulbright's extensive documented record on civil rights address above committee re recommends removing the statue of a william fulbright from its current location outside of old main there was a time when black students were not welcome under campus j william fulbright while senator voted against the interests of black students and supported values antithetical to the university. For many, the statue is a memorial to those segregationist values and a daily reminder to our black students of that time. Old Main is, is our most iconic and cherished building on campus. Students from all walks of life, from all over the world, should feel inspired to walk through its doors and learn within its walls. We can only achieve that goal if the statue of Fulbright is removed. The statue could possibly be moved to the University of Arkansas Museum or other off-campus location. And be properly contextualized there. Could be possibly honestly describing Fulbright's connection to the university and his legacy thereafter. The committee voted five to one with three absent to remove the statue from its location outside Old Main. I am I'm not as satisfied with that. I think they should just get rid of it. Just break it down. Say say goodbye. No one needs it. But you know, like it's good like they're going to change it or move it or whatever, but like as a whole I think they should just get rid of it. No point in it's like the civil rights statues. No point in having them. They're celebrating something terrible. So yeah. And then, 1919, Elaine Massacre was the deadliest act. So this is Charles Buff's name should be removed from Bruff Commons. 1919, Elaine Massacre was the deadliest act of racial violence in Arkansas. Racism and anti-union sentiment catalyzed the events and actions in the aftermath of the massacre. Further victimized the African Americans of Philip Phillips County. Bruff praised the restraint of the white community, blamed black people for the violence, empowered those who saw the unjust judicial process that sent scores of black men to prison and condemned 12 men to death. Moreover, Bruff ignored pleas from all across the county to commute or pardon those unjustly convicted. Bruff's role in the 1919 Elmane massacre is unforgivable, and there is no conceivable way to recontextualize his legacy in a way that is positive for our campus. The committee voted 16 to 0 with 3 absent. The recommendations are consistent with the guiding priority of the University of Arkansas, that is, diversity should permeate the very fabric of the University of Arkansas to create an inclusive community. It will therefore work to diversify along many dimensions of our faculty, staff, and students, and at the same time continue to foster a culture that is welcoming to all. 
We may recognize that these recommendations alone will not transform the University of Arkansas into a wholly equitable and anti-racist com campus. Nonetheless, the public memorial statues and dedications need to be changed if they re reinforce historic racism. We recommend the establishment of a rigorous and open process involving campus council for the vetting and naming opportunities for buildings and public memorials. In addition, we strongly recommend institutional changes to support Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and other students of color at the University of Arkansas, including holistic university perspective or equivalent a curriculum addressing anti-racism, extended, expanded scholarship, expanded, probably expanded, they probably mistyped, expanded scholarship opportunities and continued recruitment practices to diversify the student, faculty, and staff positions. Removing the Fulbright statue, renaming the college, renaming Brough Commons will not impinge on the university's other core values, namely academic freedom and service through teaching, research, and outreach. Rather, the removal of both the statues will advance teaching and research by promoting a more searching examination of the nation's ongoing struggle with racial discrimination. So, that. That's what the committee did, right? They said, hey, you know, their, their statements are pretty reasonable. We agree. And that's what the committee decided. You know, committee decides, and where are they? Okay, where do their recommendations go? Okay, so committee suggested, committee also re recommended. Okay, I don't care about that. Alright, cool. So that's what they recommended. Now, you know what's the fun part? The fun part. Uh, Chancellor uh, recommendations on Fulbright. So, Steinmetz, uh, he's the Chancellor at the University of Arkansas. Let's just say he ain't exactly a, ain't exactly a good person. So, yeah, um, what happens is uh, Steinmetz has done some pretty shitty stuff. Uh, for example, a woman was raped, um, and she was in the process of suing uh, the person who raped him, raped her. And the problem comes is, one, he has been able to keep his identity secret, and two, is the University of Arkansas, the chancellor, paid him $20,000. He literally, one, got to get away with it, and two, he got paid $20,000. So, like, to be honest, it's bullshit, right? That's what the, one of the things he's done, and it's so fucking stupid, it's annoying. It's like Steinmetz is continuously being some kind of fucking weasel. Now, the best part is it gets fucking better. Dear President Bobbitt, as you know, the university formed a committee to evaluate Senator J. William Fulbright's controversial and complex legacy on our campus. Its charge was to explore whether the Statue of Fulbright should continue to occupy a place in the center of campus, and whether the college that bears his name should continue to do so. The committee was also asked to consider the naming and potential renaming of Charles Hillman Bruff Commons. Last month, this committee released its recommendations, which have been posted on the campus website. Charles Bruff's name should be removed from the Bruff Commons. William Fulbright's statue should be removed from its location outside of Old Main. Fulbright's name should be removed from the College of Arts and Sciences. Since the committee released its recommendations, I have much received much additional feedback and have considered additional input and perspectives from a range of university stakeholders. So first off, relying on the university stakeholders, right? This shows by relying on the university stakeholders, your interests do not align with that of the students or the faculty. What you're doing is you're showing that your interest aligns with the stakeholders, the people who pay the money, right? It's the cat. It's the incentive. It's the uh, showing how, in a way, um, the universities are commodified, because by relying on their input, their value judgments, you basically are catering to them instead of catering to the students who are having to engage in this and need this, right? And 
another component is how students are advocating, how they are directly being affected by this. And if you rely on the stakeholders instead of listening to the arguments being made by these students, then you're basically saying, students, go fuck yourselves. I don't give a shit what you do. That's literally what he's saying. That's what he's saying. But yeah, I, I have heard from my students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends at the university, and I've had lengthy discussions on this matter with every member of my executive committee, committee, our academic deans, and some of the university administrators, you and members of the board of trustees. I have taken this wide range of input very seriously, and I would summarize the input as diverse and highly polarized, especially related to Fulbright. Opinions range from don't change anything to complete divest the university from all connections with Fulbright. And as expected, many expressed a middle ground. One thing is very clear. As public servants and educators, we have an obligation to reckon our past with and reconsider who we choose to honor and how we choose to do it. As a community of researchers and scholars, we should be in a perpetual process of discovery, updating and augmenting our knowledge and upstanding understanding of the world around us to get out the, to account for fresh perspective and new evidence as well as recognize the importance of historical context both now and in the past. This is how progress proceeds. We strive for a society that is more inclusive, blah, 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 blah. And thus, as a campus, we have increasingly embraced diversity and inclusion as a necessary institutional strength and sign of excellence. It's a lot of words right now. I'm just going to go through it. I'm sorry. Basically, is he's he's trying to posture. He's trying to push himself up. Kind of like saying, this is a responsibility we have. Given these goals, new and fresh viewpoints must be considered, especially when they tell us we are not living up to our own values as a university. Indeed, that is what it's meant, that is what it means to give people a seat at the table, the right to ask uncomfortable questions about who we valorize, and as well as the right to an expectant answer. And it's clear that a portion of our campus feels the, ver the veneration of Brough and Fulbright is contradictory to the values we espouse as a university and undermines their sense of belonging. Let's start with the most straightforward decision first, removing Nate Bruff's name from the Commons. The desire to rename Bruff stems primarily from his role in the aftermath of the 1919 Elaine Massacre. The event is a tragic chapter in Arkansas history in which stories passed down through generation upon generation. There are students on this campus who can treat ancestors who were murdered during this terrible massacre. Frankly, I had no idea who Bruff was prior to this conversation, and associations to this campus are largely due to his appointment as a faculty member on the campus in the early 1900s. And after further conversation with members of the UFA community, it's clear to me that Bruff's connection to the institution is not strong if present at all. While it is true that under his gubernatorial leadership, Arkansas became the only southern state to allow women's suffrage prior to the 19th Amendment, and he publicly supported anti-lynching laws, something rare in the day, his governorship was significantly barred by his actions that led to one of the deadliest racial conflicts in history. So, the potential problem that comes up is by saying, here's the good stuff. He's like, even though he did these good things, we say, you know, he's still a kind of shitty person. So, like... The way he's framing it, I don't really like, and by specifically highlighting this instead of realizing the arguments that people are highlighting is because he was involved in the 19 massacre. You don't really need to like try to contextualize the good stuff he's did, done. It's kind of just like a little wish-washy. And yeah, but he's he was he was a racist. He engaged in the Lane massacre. Since 1958, students have dined in a hall with little awareness of its namesake or the rough ties to the Lane massacre or its general place in history. Given these facts and the rough tendent, give me a second. Given these facts and the rough tangential at best connection to the university at this time, I am requesting that the board of trustees allow the university to remove this name, this name from the dining hall. The case of General William Fulbright is more complicated, and here's where he's going to start um, doing some weaseling tactics. On the one hand. Critics have focused on his civil rights record. Specific concerns center on his decision to sign the Southern Manifesto and willingness to challenge oral fallbust in the Little Rock Central High School crisis, opposition to the Civil Rights Bill of 1957 and 64, and a vote against the Voting Rights Bill of 1965. On the other hand, we also must weigh his contributions as the president of the university and as a U.S. senator, including opposition to the Vietnam War and perhaps his greatest legacy, the Fulbright International Exchange Program, likely the most prestigious, far-reaching, and important exchange program in the world. It reflects his commitment to internationalism and world peace. But you're... the problem comes is he's saying the positives here outweigh the negatives, when in reality is opposing these things harmed these communities, right? And by saying... 
these things help the communities. You're ignoring the entire concept that these things have harmed the communities. These are the primary crit crit criticism. But you're basically trying to, like, downplay this shit while you're also, like, boosting this shit. Nearly for blah blah blah. So basically, he says, because he created the program, even though he didn't do any of this personal shit except, like, creating the program, nearly 400,000 scholars across the world have participated in the program and have opportunity to study in another country. So basically, the problem comes is he's attributing all of this to, like, his own work, right? Even though he created the program, he really wasn't involved as much because, you know, like, entire, like, decades, you know, you can only be involved so much. And... Uh, who revere Fulbright with a full understanding of the ability to learn at a U.S. institution. Learn at a U.S. institution. Like, congratulations, he made a program, but the fact is he opposed civil rights. He opposed the Voting Rights Act. He opposed the Civil Rights Act. And as a whole, he has done considerable harm and considerable, like, pro uh, impediment to progress. And these are all the problems going on there. How do you weigh his shortcomings against his virtues? There's no simple math to provide an answer. Well, Fell short to integrate. He... With fell short of integration, he didn't fall short on integration and civil rights. He directly opposed it. It's not him falling short, it's he opposed it. Tied his shortcomings to the demands of political expediency of the times. For them, his votes did not reflect a hardened personal racism torn of African Americans. Instead, they were more a reflection of his need to appease a voting constituent that was not ready for social change. It doesn't... First off, if, if they weren't ready for social change, we wouldn't have had the integration process, right? We wouldn't have had Civil Little Rock 9 happening. We wouldn't have had all these different board cases. And the regardless of it, this is something right to do, right? It's something to pursue. It's something to push against. You need to vote for that. Like, even if it makes you lose your position as a senator, the idea is, if this is something that's happening... What is, what's more morally reprehensible? Of directly opposing these? Or, or, no, no, not, no. What's more, re, or it's, what's more morally reprehensible? Um, voting for these or directly opposing these? You can claim it's political expediency. The problem comes, you can never really know the mind of the guy, what he was thinking, and if he was, like, personally racist. You can never really know that, and the problem comes is a lot of uh, the way he's being framed is a kind of like white, uh, whitewashing, basically saying all the shit that he's done, kind of like, not really that bad. It's like kind of saying like how Thomas Jefferson, even though he created the Declaration of Independence, he just kind of owned slaves. It's the same thought process, like downplaying the actual shit he did in order to make a more popular appeal, and so that's a problem in itself. Nevertheless, the record exists, and we cannot ignore the impact of this on the lives of people struggling for basic civil rights, nor ignore how demoralizing medicine, I believe it's probably we temper our praise, while also remembering we temper our praise, basically says, we're not going to do anything, it is fine. It may look bad, but you know, like, I don't know who cares. This very discussion and conversation has created the opportunity for many to seek information and learn about this pivotal point in American history, something that may have not happened but for the existence of this issue. Well, you shouldn't have to learn about something terrible that happened. You can talk You can talk about the history, right? You can say, like, hey, um, that's a bad history, guys. Uh, Fulbright directly opposed the Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act, and integration. But we don't have to praise him. We don't even have to have him recognized, right? We don't have to ignore the history, but doesn't mean we have to, like, label our history and label our institutions by that history. Fulbright session remains another point of contention, so he wants the Fulbright name remain on the college. So basically, he's being a fucking weasel. He's literally like saying, oh, you know, just because he did some bad things, he's done plenty of good things, even though most of the good things he's attributing here are the process of multiple other people that are doing work. You don't see their names on fucking colleges or something. Just because he named, he named, he created an idea of a program, he didn't. He was probably very minimal in the process of implementation process of action. As a whole, he's just remembered because he's the guy who was like, I'm the guy in front of it. So, yeah. so it's really fucking dumb to praise him or say he's significantly great, even though he directly opposed these fundamental human rights things that brought people's lives better. And 
but however he wants to remove it. Meanwhile, I'm making formal requests to move the statue to another appropriate campus location. And then from there, go uh, doing so. He's just gauging his more. Um, what's it called? Here, I'm just gonna link both of these here if you guys want to read them yourselves. Yeah, I'll just link both of these. But basically, all this, and then he's saying, "Here's our new initiatives." Uh, so, perhaps a better way to signal a true and abiding commitment to creating an environment where all members of our community feel a sense of belonging and ability to contribute in meaningful ways. It is, is it is to invest in programs and activities that advance our diversity, equi equity, inclusion, and sense of belonging. To this end, I take this opportunity to introduce you and the public some new initiatives, in addition to the many important things we are already doing. We've organized under four pillars that will make us a better campus. Implement. Pillar 1, Climate. Implement a new paradigm centered around belonging. Establish a clear vision of how student, all students can and should experience a sense of belonging on our campus. It's ever dedicated to helping students find community in measurable ways and feel like they matter. The framework was served. So, like, this is already so vague in itself. There's no, like, specifics. He's describing policy generalities, but we're not hearing any of the specific examples and how that policy can be included. Students, student scholarship program. We are making a pilot investment, improving access for underrepresented Arkans Arkansas grad and grad students to international experiences and domestic experiential learning. The focus will be on students from the Arkansas Delta as well as South Arkansas with a Fulbright College majors. We hope to launch the program this coming academic year. So I feel like this is great, but the potential problem that could be is like saying like, hey, we're just going to focus on Arkansans instead of realizing like black and minorities are like have been screwed over by this process. So, you know, maybe, like, have a greater emphasis on, like, those specific communities and the previous, like, lack of access and such. And such. December 2021, completed construction of the Student Success Center. We anticipate our pre-matriculation programs will even better serve first-generation other populations in terms of needs of services and support. I said before, and we'll say again, every student will admit to the university has the capacity to flourish and succeed. It's our, bit, it's our duty to provide the tools and support necessary. Programs such as the Accelerated Student Achievement Program, Engineering Career Awareness Program, and Academic Enrichment Program, and other academic opportunities provide meaningful, measurable support to students and may be scaled where appropriate. The problem comes is this whole entire framing, this whole entire debate, this entire argument has been cruxed around the idea of racism and how the problems that have like continued to continuously affect us today, including the remaining of the right naming college. So while these are good like these two are good the problem comes is his emphasis by trying to like it's kind of like the all lives matter of college students by emphasizing all college students you're kind of like demeaning and taking away from the important narrative here is how these specific communities have been like um prevented from access in a way or maybe give them more access give them more access to like scholarships and such <clears throat> I launched the Gordon Morgan, Morgan Visiting Faculty Program, named the university's first African American faculty member, professor in Fulbright College. We will seek board approval to name a big signature faculty fellowship program designed to serve as a pipeline for the recruitment of minority and upper represented faculty. This does major two things. Two major things roll out the welcome mat to pros prospective faculty and creates pathways for academic careers on a campus for additional upper for underrepresented faculty. It's an essential part of a student's sense of belonging and growth to engage diverse faculty who add to the intellectual and social richness of the campus community. So yeah, that's fine. I'm fine with that. That's pretty good. Development recruitment plan for a diversity pipe. In addition to the above mentioned pipeline program, we'll develop a specific and comprehensive plan for the recruitment of the underrepresented faculty and staff with a special focus on mid-career professionals. While I would like to see some specifics, I'm fine with him not having a specific at the moment, even though it's kind of frustrating. It's like, we're going to commit ourselves. But we're not going to give you any specific screen. When people <coughs> ascribe policy positions and policy actions that they're going to take, I would really like to see them, what they're going to do specifically, not just some general vague terms, right? Deploy retention program. Recruiting underrepresented employees is only a first step. Ensuring they feel welcome and supported is the next step to retaining talent and faculty and staff. Through the development of retention programs for monitor, mentoring and coaching, access to conferences, and enhanced employee resource groups, we will set the benchmark of being the among most desirable employers, employers in the state. Pillar 4, Center for Greek Chapters of Work, will dedicate an entire building as a welcoming space for student groups and alumni who are members of smaller, traditionally unhoused Greek chapters whose membership is primarily minority-based, including some of our NPHC organizations. 
This will be a place where these groups can gather, convene, hold meetings, and events, have a place of fellowship and community dedicated to their co-curricular activities. We will designate University House located a prominent and highly visible Maple Street location to serve this purpose and fulfill the long-standing need articulated by these Greek organizations. We'll begin programming this space this summer with an anticipated opening in the fall. So, this is, this is alright. I'm personally not a big fan of Greek life. Um, the problem comes I have with Greek life more than anything is uh, the level of privilege they get because they're like uh, the, the elite of the elite in a way. They're uh, given more money, they're given more access, they have uh, larger abilities to socialize. And Greek life um, has a significantly more uh, favoritism that commits with the student body um, council and the president and the senate. Because of that, it makes it significantly difficult for other clubs to be able to uh, campaign and receive access to funds when the degree of bias is significant. Uh, expansion of the multicultural center. Physical sp multicultural center is basically like, hey, you're not white? Punk! There you go! There you go! It's your space! Just because you're not white! They'd be like, alright, dude, like, can you, like, expand more, like, get more spaces instead of just, like, this one multicultural center, you know, like, get spaces for, like, Asian, um, cultures, get spaces for, like, different components of Africa, or all that shit. So, like, the process comes is, like, even though it's, like, it's alright, it's, like, kind of half measures, it's kind of, like, milk toast, really, and it's frustrating more than anything. And the, oh, this is the, this is the really st stupid, um, Committing the nine nine. So basically, is they're going to finish a garden that's like Greek life garden. And the Greek life garden literally matters so little, it does not even matter. Like, the, the garden means nothing here. Like, congratulations, you got a garden from typically um, underrepresented groups. Like, you know what? Maybe you should just, like, give them more money or give them actual areas of housing and shit. So, you know, like, as a whole. It's pretty dumb. Uh, saying this is a fucking weasel. Like, he does these half measures where he says, eh, you gotta got a point, but if you got something over here, I kinda want you yeah, just ignore that. And that's just the kind of annoying, weaselly shit he does, right? And it's kind of fucking bonkers. So, yeah. University of Arkansas sucks. I have to go here, though, so, yeah. Make sure you like, follow, share, subscribe, leave a comment and shit. So, yeah.